Hi, everybody. This is Advocate Lucinda, your empowerment lawyer. We are going to talk about privilege documents and how to keep those documents private after the defendant has filed a discovery request to produce those documents. So let's get started. In this scenario, the defendant propounds discovery upon plaintiff and requests certain documents. Plaintiff objects to the request on the ground the documents are privileged. Plaintiff then may file a motion for in-camera review. Some jurisdictions require that the party asserting privilege file a motion for in-camera review. So be sure to read the state law and always read local rules and get familiar with that particular court's practices. Before you file a motion for in-camera review, be sure you conferred with the defendant and address your written objections. Make sure that the grounds upon which you are objecting are clear as required in Federal Rule Civil Procedure 34 because federal rules require that the parties meet and try to resolve the disagreement before the motion is filed. And once the parties have conferred in good faith, plaintiff must attach a good faith certificate with the motion. See Federal Rule Civil Procedure 37. And again, read local rules. So let's look at privilege and in-camera review more closely. Privilege in the law of evidence protects certain documents and information from disclosure or discovery. The documents and information cannot be inquired into in any way and cannot be asked about in testimony. So what this particular slide does is tell us what privilege does. But we're going to get a clearer definition of what privilege is later on in this presentation. In camera review is a process where a judge privately looks at confidential, sensitive, or private information to determine what if any information may be used by a party or made to the public. The following slides further define privilege and it demonstrates in-camera review in practice. Before we go there, Let's look at the standard for in-camera review. There is no clear-cut rule in case law for in-camera review regarding whether a judge may review privileged documents. In fact, most courts allow judges to use their discretion. In their discretion, the judge weighs ethical and practical considerations. For example, whether the party asserting the privilege would be harmed if the documents are released or whether the opposing party or the public would be harmed if the documents are not released. And generally, the burden is on the party asserting the privilege to show cause why the judge should conduct in-camera review of the documents. Let's discuss four privilege topics. 
they will help us get a better grasp on these theories, privilege, and in-camera review. They are work product, attorney-client privilege, spousal communications, and email slash social media. Work product privilege permits an attorney or pro se litigant to withhold from production documents and other tangible things prepared in anticipation of litigation. A week or so ago, I uploaded a video on work product. You need to review that if you haven't. But the rule for work product privilege would be Federal Rule Civil Procedure 26B3. Attorney-client privilege. Communications between the attorney and his or her client are confidential. They are protected by the attorney-client privilege. Now, as in most situations, there are exceptions. As there are exceptions to the work product rule. But generally, these communications between the attorney and his client are confidential, absence any exception. And you want to read Federal Rule Civil Procedure 26B1. Also at the bottom is a link. I want you to download this link because it provides you with detailed information on these communications and even exceptions. I will list this link at the bottom of this video. Spousal communications. Husband and wife communications made during the marriage are privileged if the communication is intended to be private and made in reliance on the sanctity of marriage, even if the marriage is terminated because of divorce or the death of one spouse, this privilege could be asserted. I find this really interesting because let's say that the plaintiff files a lawsuit and one of the causes of action is emotional distress. Well, you're married. Who are you going to discuss your distress with? Your spouse. And sometimes the defense counsel will get wind of this or just automatically assume that the plaintiff is discussing her issue with her husband, which is reasonable to believe. So the defendant propounds discovery and asks for discussions between the husband and the wife. And let's say that the wife contacts her husband, emails him with these uh, distressful situations. That makes sense, right? It happens. We're normal. It happens. And so defense counsels propounds discovery. Well, generally, the privilege could be asserted absent any exception, okay? Let's talk a little bit about emails and social media. Generally, where a litigant voluntarily posts pictures and information on social media sites to share with other users of the sites, he or she cannot claim privilege. Now that's common sense, right? But what about emails? Let's look at a scenario. So in this scenario, the plaintiff, who is pro se, filed an employment discrimination lawsuit. One of her claims was emotional distress. Prior to filing the lawsuit, she consulted with an attorney, even though she did not hire that attorney. In her emails to the attorney, she described her emotional distress. Defendant propounded discovery to plaintiff and requested her emails. 
plaintiff objected on the ground the documents are protected by the attorney-client privilege. Defendant opposes the objection on the ground, contending because the email speaks to plaintiff's claim, which is emotional distress, plaintiff waived privilege and the attorney has a right to the emails. So the question here is, could defendant's argument be an exception to the attorney-client privilege rule? See, these are the kinds of things the plaintiff would need to contemplate and prepare for even before filing the motion for in-camera review. Let's see what the attorney-client privilege exceptions are. Attorney-client privilege exceptions. Death of a client. Fiduciary duty. Crime or fraud exception. Common interest exception. This is homework because surely if you file a motion for a camera review based on attorney client privilege, you want to understand this exception. Question Based on the above scenario that we just reviewed and looking at these exceptions, will defendant be successful? in obtaining plaintiff's emails. What is my point in all of this? Be prepared to defend your motion. And lastly, cite case law. If you want to convince the judge that he or she should conduct in-camera review, cite case law to support your position. I have provided you with three cases that will give you an even deeper understanding of in-camera review and privilege. Now these three cases, one may have cited for the defendant, the others for the plaintiff, but at any rate, it doesn't matter whether the plaintiff files the motion for in-camera review or the defendant. The rules and the process are the same. So in reading these cases and others, you will learn as the plaintiff what to do and what not to do. Okay, I hope this has been helpful to you. I'm Advocate Lucinda, and until next time, be empowered.